So I'm Goldwyn. I work with the file systems team. And uh, the reason I may be yelling in my mic is probably because it's time to wake up my kids back in my time zone. But anyways. Uh, so I'll be talking about DAC support on ButterFS. This is something which we kind of uh, uh, started with ar ar right around Last Labs conference. Uh, we kind of discussed out the design and how it should be placed. So it's been quite a roller coaster ride from there because we started with DAX and started exploring other things. So we'll just, <coughs> for now, we'll concentrate on what we, we have so far. So I'll just go through the initial slides very fast. Uh, what is DAX? It's a block device which kind of behaves like a memory device where you, you, you don't have to have a page cache, you just mem copy into the device directly. Uh, it's persistent storage, which means it can uh, <coughs> survive power failures. Uh, it's byte addressable, that's why you can mem copy, not just block at the block level, you can mem copy parts of it as well. Uh, direct MMU mappings, you can treat it just like a memory. There are functions in the kernel where you would convert uh, probably a sector offset to a memory offset and just do a regular mem copy with it. Uh, why do we use DAX? Of course, uh, we the whole page cache, we kind of just bypass it. So maybe it gets faster, but well, there are some cases it's where page cache can behave better because when you're doing multiple reads and writes in the same offsets, probably your page cache will be much more faster th there. Uh, coming to what ButterFS is, uh, the main important uh, aspect of it, which we'll be discussing today, is copy on write. Uh, but besides that, it has fault tolerance, multi-device, data compression, and encryption. No? OK. My, my team members, my, all my ButterFS team members are saying no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the current implementation, there's already XFS and EXT4 support, uh, though in some cases it's still marked as experimental because people don't have much confidence in it as yet. Uh, probably because there are the amount of failures you have with respect to bad blocks or something of that sort, uh, but still. Uh, in Linux, you have the IO map where uh, what it es essentially does is tries to convert your file offsets, basically through the help of file systems, of course, through to block device offsets. It's kind of a intermediary layer between your file system and your block device. And that has an interface which the rest of the file systems are using. It's called DAX IOMAP read write. And the way it works is it kind of calls a, with all the offset magic it does, it calls IO map apply, which is basically a function callback to, to whatever function callback you've passed it to. So in this case, it is, of course, the DAX IO map actor. And it basically what it does is the translations from your file offsets or your block device offsets to memory gives it permission. And all you have to do eventually is uh, copy from or to this memory address which you get. It's, it's as simple as a mem copy altogether. Now, with uh, the existing file systems like ext4 or XFS, whenever you perform a read or a write, you already know beforehand that, okay, it, okay, before we go further, direct access, you can say, is a combination of direct IO and accessing me memory directly. So we don't have the concept of BIOS and all that stuff altogether. So with the uh, existing file systems, what happens is you get a file, it converts it into a sector offset, it goes inside the DAX system, and all you do is a copy from user or copy to user. Now with ButterFS, the difference is we cannot use the same block offsets because it's a copy on write file system. So we rely on it being whatever data is there being copied to a new offset altogether. Now, it gets its own set of challenges because if you want modifying, which is not on exactly your page aligned, like maybe 
it, say if it's a 4 KB page size and you're starting to write from the 20th byte offset, you'll need to copy the previous first 20 bytes into a new offset or a new uh, block and then start your write altogether. So whenever you perform a write in ButterFS, you have to allocate new blocks just like you do in Direct IO and copy existing data, whatever is there. Now Direct IO, of course, you do it in block boundaries itself. So you usually do not copy data from there. But with a combination of having a Direct IO and block, uh, we have to copy existing data into the new allocation and then start writing into it. So whenever you perform a write, it has to start with creating new mappings, copy the data, and then hand it over to the regular DAX IOMAP RW to continue the mapping. So in order to perform this, we had to change the IOMAP sequence altogether, how uh, lots of iterations and the final iteration says that we'll add a new IOMAP structure altogether, which will be the source. So whenever it sees that there is something in the source, you perform a copy into the new block, uh, new uh, system or new IO map and proceed with your write. So we had three major challenges, of course, the copy on write. The second one was M map. Now with M map, uh, what a DAX device does it, it maps it directly on the page on the device itself. It is not in the page cache, it is in the device. So. Again, you have to do the same copy on write operations, but instead of doing just partial, you have to do the whole page altogether to show that, okay, you can read and write from it. Uh, in, in a normal write operation, we had to do just partial or only the ones which are outside the bounds of the write, we used to copy, but with MMAP, because it's like a normal memory, you have to copy the whole entire block and then start working on it. Uh, a bigger problem was snapshots. Now with snapshots, the problem is if, you, if a user has performed an MMAP on the, on the device and it's still accessing the page on the device and you perform a snapshot, if the user continues to modify that information, it, it's, 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 it's actually um, violating the rules of snapshot because a snapshot is supposed to be read only. And if once the MMAP completes, you'll have a completely different data than you expected it to be. So with snapshots, what we did was we marked the pages as read-only. So if the user tries to access the page again for a write, it gets a page fault. And when you get a page fault, you can do the whole copy on write again and start afresh. And of course, uh, how we do it is, uh, we don't have writebacks in DAX, but a writeback is typically just converting your page mappings into read-only. So we collect all the inodes which are performing IMAP and say, okay, uh, we once uh, if there is a snapshot, we'll just convert the mappings to read-only so that we get more page faults when you try to write on it again. So we are still not there yet. Uh, because uh, uh, address space, repay, most of the ButterFS functions depend on address pages, uh, address space, read pages, and those need to be worked on. Uh, we also had uh, limitations. Multi-device is not supported. We can't do compression or encryption because all of that is done in page cache itself. Um, and we discussed earlier as well, multi-device is quite a task to, or rather impossible to do right now. Data yes, any, any data transformation like compression, encryption, everything will, will require a page cache and this is directly right into a device itself, so it cannot handle that. Of course, as we were developing, uh, we discovered that we could, we could use IOMAP for our regular operations as well. Now, currently, we have the whole crux of the page cache handling inside our ButterFS. So once we manage to transfer it into IOMAP, we'll probably not be using page cache directly. 
for your regen's writes only, as in not as for write batch. For write batch, we'll still need page cache. We'll have to access it and all that. But just the copy from and to operations, we can do away with page cache entirely. Uh, for this, we had to take out page private, which is also used in IOMAP for buffer head, uh, sorry, sub page size mapping. And uh, this was conflicting. So we, it's, it still has some bugs, but it, it's a work in progress right now. Uh, <coughs> one of the biggest problems which we are, or we are stuck at, probably we could get some input on that, is shared extent page. So whenever we have a extent or a common extent which is shared among multiple inodes, your inode eye mapping will po point to those pages, and your page mapping will point to your inode. So, <coughs> which is fine as far as reading is concerned, honestly, because you can you can uh, read all through it. But when it comes to write, we have a problem. So eventually, your problem would look like this, where one page is being shared by multiple inodes altogether, which is still fine, honestly. Uh, the bigger problem is. What happens when there is a, a, a when you're trying to m map the page mapping of this page back to the inode? So it doesn't know who which inode it belongs to, and because of, or rather it, it's just one pointer. So it's basically whoever ha wins, it's a race condition. There is there are talks going on with respect to this with. I don't know, multiple end-to-end -end page mapping, but it's a nightmare altogether. I am looking at further solutions, but if you guys have any ideas on this, that'll be awesome. Uh, besides that, I am also looking into doing it in DAX itself. Uh, I kind of had a ding moment yesterday with respect to uh, a DAX where it maps, it, it tries to map to a linear address. So if you can kind of use linear address plus one or linear address plus two, if you can have multiple page mappings, um, still need to work on that. But if anything else, any other ideas, that will be awesome. But honestly, that's about it on my slides. If there are any questions, anything, please tell me. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where's the... Wireless mic, wireless yeah, microphone. Okay, okay, the wireless mic is probably not being used. So one of the things I'm looking at uh, in terms of the, the page mapping problem is that it seems like if we can resolve it outside of DAX, then we might be able to use whatever the solution is to end up being able to do page cache sharing. Mm -hmm. And that could end up being a killer feature for ButterFS because right now that's something that, um, well, subvolumes are a really good match for containers, but when you have to have, you, you know, you have 16 subvolumes that all have the same content because they're all snapshots, and every copy of libc is loaded separately. Right. That's that wastes a huge amount of memory, and right. so what ends up being the the preferred deployment scenario is that it's overlay FS on top of XFS, and mm -hmm. because the underlying inodes are shared, you get the page cache sharing, and, and that makes sense. But you lose that ability to use snapshots. Right. Um, so it may be the harder solution, mm -hmm. but I think it brings other benefits with it. Yes, okay. I think Miklos, uh, as I heard from Mikhail yesterday, that Miklos is working on such a solution, but. Uh, I'm not sure how popular it was in the in the community because uh, it, it, it kind of met was met with a lot of opposition um, just because of the complexity of it perhaps. Yeah, uh, Joseph Basic has looked at this a while ago mm -hmm. and said trying to keep the mapping straight in his head just <laughs> drove him crazy. So it, it is gonna be complicated, um, but we are getting requests all over the place on both sides, so I think it it's worth looking into. You know, one idea how to address that is to follow, as we discussed yesterday, to basically follow the Anon VMA model that we have for right. the anonymous memory, mm -hmm. because that's what we eff effectively <coughs> do there, because we have to share the same anonymous page. 
through forking. And so you effectively, uh, effectively have different DNAs to, to map the same thing. So that's a model to, to look at and maybe take on help. Could you use the mic? <laughs> okay, that was a private discussion. It seems. Anyways, any more questions? Uh, I got the uh, I got the impression that the implementation is going to be quite complex. Uh, are there any bottlenecks uh, in the design, or uh, is there uh, are there any bottlenecks in the design already known, or are there any uh, complications uh, ahead? So, right now the bottleneck which we are facing is a reverse mapping of page to inode, multiple re multiple uh, reverse mappings from page back to inode for a shared extent. So that is a design issue. I have checked performances with, <coughs> sorry, with a PMEM, uh, which is not exactly an NVDIM system where you could do it. And the performance was a little bit better uh, versus a normal, uh, like using PMEM as a regular block device. But uh, yeah, I think it, as I said, uh, it basically needs a lot of work. So we just can't compile and ship it immediately. But yeah, it's it's a work in progress. Good, thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. I assume there are no more questions. So, all right. Thank you very much.